Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in our calculation and modeling of seismic loads via the ASC 7 2016 and of course this video is part of a bigger video series talking about the theory behind it and in today's video we are going to implement the video and we are going to check out the results and see if they are coinciding with the results we got when we did our manual calculation. So with that being said, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Alright, so let's start our thing by calling a building design template. So if I click on that, of course, it opens a building design template. Now, if you are new to robot, of course, we have a big video series talking about all the things about robot. And you can brush up your robot abilities by checking out the tutorials that are available on the channel, which I'll be linking on the top right. Our template has been opened. Those are my assumptions. So those are the assumptions. You can pause the video and you can print screen because we're going to implement those assumptions. I will go back and forth multiple times to check them out. Okay, so 5544 five, and 3.55 five times. So let's do that. Okay, I go to my axis and I ask for 5 and 10 in the X, 4 and 8 in the Y, and then the Z 0 and 3.5. I'll apply that, which creates my axis. Fantastic. Now I'll go to my column and I'll select a reinforced concrete column. And I select 300 by 500, which is not here. So I can click on the three dots here and I can open me two definitions, 300 by 500 and 500 by 300. I need two columns because I have two orientations for the columns. Notice I am not doing the reduction of moment of inertia thing because I'm going to ignore it for this example. So, okay, let's start by selecting this one, beginning height 3.5 down. If I click on this, I get a column. Let me just check the orientation of the column. Let's see that's the orientation. Is it the orientation I want? No. So this and this are different and the rest are the same. Okay. So I have to delete this one, but I can just do the other ones. So let me just do them very quickly. Oh, now I did two wrong. So I need to delete them. Give me a sec. So now those two are incorrect. I'll just delete this one by clicking and deleting, pushing the delete button. And here, pushing the delete button, selecting column again, and modeling it. But this time, I need to select the other column. Fantastic. Now I click here, and it should be the correct orientation. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. Now I need to do my beams. My beams are 300 by 500. So I select my beam, select reinforce concrete beam, select 300 by 500. I see it. It's there. But I want to check if I click on the section, is it really 300 by 500? So let's take a look. Wait, what? Wait, I think there is a bug I mean, again. I think there is a bug, so I'll just, you know what? I'll define my own 300 by 500 just to be on the safe side. So basic dimensions 300 by 500. I'll add that, close, and I will select it. So now no shenanigans whatsoever. I clicked on drag because I want to draw quickly. So there we go. We are drawing now a beam. Of course, that's a very simplified structure, but our goal is to double check ASCE versus robot. I click on the floors here and I will define me a floor of 150 millimeters. That's what we want. Let's check the symbol if it's right or wrong. Yes, that's 150 millimeter. There is no bug here. The type is shell and I've explained the different times before in a video. I think I will link it top right if I remember that. It's a rectangle. So there we go. That's my rectangular shell. Fantastic. Now we want to do loads. So I click on the load types. I will add me a dead load. And now my dead load is there. I'll select the loads and I'll go to the surface load. Uniform load, negative 10 kilonewtons per meter square, because those are the inputs of my structure. Why am I doing this? Because I want to do a one-to-one -one reenactment of those of this example. So, okay, negative 10, I'll add that and close. So now I have my forces. I like to do a run just to make sure everything is fine. However, we're not finished. That's just a preliminary run to see if everything is fine. And indeed, everything is fine. Now I will basically remove the calculation. So I click on this and say X. Delete the calculation model so it gets deleted. And now I will right click on story, go to stories and ask it to copy the story. And I want to copy it four times above. So there we go. It should give us story five. It's copying now. It's taking more time than usual. My computer is at the moment struggling. All right, so the, the structure has been defined. Now I only see one story because there is a story filter here. If you remove it, you can see all the structure stories. So now we are ready to do our calculation. Okay, now first things first, I need to define my seismic model. So allow me to show you different mistakes you can do when you define your seismic model. You go to calculate analysis parameters and in the analysis parameters, you type in a new analysis type. If you click on that, so let me show you different ways that you can mess it up. 
And I hope that you don't skip seconds here because it's very important that you end follow me with this one. So the first mistake that you can do is you can go simply to new, just like that, and go to Seismic and hit OK. Of course, here it warns you that you need to apply because you are using the simplified method. So he's telling you, hey, the code tells you that there are limitations. And you can just go to analysis parameters. This is, in this is incorrect, by the way. And you can select RC frame here and RC frame here and input the values 0.669. I get them from the previous uh, attempts. Let me see. Uh, 0 0.669, 1 1.88, 8. Okay, 1.88 and 8. The R is 3 and side class B. You can see those values are actually similar, like 1.128 and 3.57. Those are exactly what I got here. 1.128 and uh, 3.57. So you think you are on the right path. However, we're absolutely not on the right path. Because if you click on OK here and OK here, just click OK everywhere. And this is incorrect. This is incorrect. But I want to show you the common mistakes. So this is common mistake number one. And if you calculate the load, of course, it does perform a seismic analysis, and you can see the seismic analysis uh, by going to results and diagrams for buildings. You can show the FX and description, and you can see the force on X. Of course, you need to show the center of gravity for that, and FY. And now you select, for example, direction X, and you can see the forces. Those are the shear forces on the building on each one of those um, stories. I'll talk about this in a moment. But you can see that those values are nothing like the value we got. We got around 1,400, but those are not 1,400. Now, why is that? The reason why this is the case is because robot is only calculating self-weight here. However, in our calculation, there is this big W calculation. We calculated something called the seismic effective weight, W, which is here. Now, robot doesn't do that. Robot just flat out ignored this entire value and just use those three things. So that's incorrect. And that's why, of course, everything is incorrect. So that's not how we do things, which means I need to close this. I need to go to my calculation options here or analysis parameters. And I need to delete those two things because that is an incorrect way of doing things. Unfortunately, that's incorrect. OK, now, why is it incorrect? Because the lead load has not been included in the calculation of the mass of the structure. W, the seismic weight. How do you do this? You go to lad load to mass conversion. But remember, I this is the second attempt, and I will intentionally make a mistake here because I want to show you what happens if you make a mistake. A load to mass conversion, I want to convert cases to mass. Now, this is dead load because it has a superimposed dead load. So the dead load needs to be converted into a mass. Let me see if the loads are. Where are the loads? Give me a second. So, simple cases. Oh, there we go. Dead load. And there it is, right? Okay, that was a bug. So now I want to convert case number one into a mass. And of course, it's in the negative Z. Now, if I add this, this means that now the entire dead load is considered a mass. Now, if you go back to analysis type and again define your seismic, the same thing as before. And uh, yeah, just select uh, seismic analysis parameters, ask it to be a reinforced concrete frame, ask it to be a reinforced concrete frame in the Y and put your values 0 0.669, 1 1.88, and 8, and 3, and site class B. And if you say OK now, it creates the two values here. And if you perform calculation, you think you have done it right. Unfortunately, you haven't done it right, and I will show you why. So once the calculation is complete, if you go to your X case, you see that the values are kind of overshooting. Like, OK, they are in the thousands. But they are not what we got. We got 1,406 in the bottom. Like, let me remind you, the seismic load we got on the bottom, the shear, is 1,406. What we get on robot is 1,900. So why is that? And this is where I need your absolute focus. I need your uninterrupted attention now. Please, what have we done? Let me just delete those things first of all. So I'll delete this, and I'll delete this. Okay, I deleted those things. So I'll go back to dead load. So let me just click simple cases in dead load. So we are back into our first place. What have we done? We have added the load to mass conversion and we asked it for case one to be included into the mass. This means that the self-weight has been calculated twice. This is strange, but end follow me. You see, even if you have no cases, when you go to analysis type and define yourself a new seismic analysis type and you click OK, you can see that here there is a tick 
called disregard density. If you click disregard density, then Autodesk robot will not calculate the self weight based on the density. Because what happens here is that Autodesk robot calculates the self weight of the structure based on the density of the structure. You would think, wait a minute, that's crazy. Because the self weight is already included in dead load one. That's true. But Autodesk robot doesn't know that. It's a software and that's how it rolls. In other words, I would, I would be able to delete it, and even if I delete dead load one, I'm still able to open a new seismic load, but in that case, I would have to include density. Now, in our case, because the self-weight loads load table, the self-weight is included in the dead load case. Here is the self-weight. You can see it being included in the dead load case. So at the moment, when I went here to load to mass conversion, and I consciously added case one to be a mass, now here, this case one includes both superimposed dead load and mass. So what ends up happening is that this load case includes the self-weight. Now, when you go back to analysis type and define a new type, which is seismic, here, look, because you included the self-weight in dead load one, and you asked robot to include dead load one as a mass, when you do your seismic analysis, you have to disregard the density now because it is already included in dead load one. I hope this is clear. I will define eccentricities right now, because now this is the time where everything will be working. And in the method of defining, I will use the approximate method, not the model analysis. And when you click on seismic analysis parameters, now I want to be careful when I input. First of all, the CT, this CT is used to calculate the period. This, this is the CT, okay? And for CT, you need to use table 12.8-2, which asks you for the type of the structure. So that's why the type of the structure must be inputted here. Now, this is an RC frame. Direction Y, it's also an RC frame. S1 is 0.669 and 1.88 and 8 and side plus B. And R is 3. So let's input those things. 0.669, 1.88, T is 8, R is 3. Now, those values are not refreshed, but if you click on the site B, then it refreshes to 0.357 and 1.128 and you can see those are exactly the same i will click again on disregard density it's very important i click it i select okay and okay and now it creates a ton of cases because as because i asked for eccentricities so now it creates a ton of cases where you have eccentricity x and eccentricity y in both directions a lot of cases okay so i will run the calculation again hoping for the best. And now I'm expecting values to be close to what I calculated of 1,406. And look, this is amazing. Let me select, now of course, every one of those has an eccentricity, but I won't focus on eccentricities now. I want to focus on 716X. Look at the values. This is beautiful. 458, 820. And before you, I know some of you have skipped here. So before you do that, let me tell you how I got this. I go to results. Diagrams for buildings. This will give you stuff that is necessary for the building itself. If you click F, this will give you center of gravity of the floor slab. And you can see the center of gravity of the floor slab is here. If you click on G, it will give you the center of gravity of a story, which includes the columns. And that's why it's here. And R is the center of rigidity, which is here. Because there are columns. You can even see the coordinates for the center of gravity and rigidity and so on. Pretty cool. And you can see the forces in the center of gravity. Not only the forces, you can even see the moments, the overturning moments of the structure. For example, you can call MY, and you see the overturning moments around the y-axis, which increase, of course, the lower you are. And so on, you can see everything here. Now, I will focus on FX, because it's the shear and the direction of X. Let's take a look at the values. Those values are eerily similar to what I got here. They are not the same, mind me, but they are similar. And even, I've shown you this in a slide before. They are eerily similar to what you have gotten before. But that's not everything. You might be interested in checking out the W that we calculated. Now, you could open the reactions and add them together, or you could go to results and go to reactions here, and in the end down, you see the summations of everything. And you can see the summation of the reactions in case one is 6930. And if you go back to our slide, you can see that the mass of the structure is 6930. And that's why I had those assumptions of ignoring the intersections, because I wanted to uh, be the same as Autodesk Robot. So yeah, I think uh, that's amazing. You might be interested in seeing how Robot does things. So if you go to Analysis and ask for a calculation node, you can ask for a simplified node or a full node. I want to ask for a simplified calculation node. 
which shows you exactly how it was calculated. And if you go down in the calculation node, you can see in the case of seismic in the X, look at this amazing stuff. You have, of course, the excitation direction X. You can see the soil data, the S1, S2, and the FAs. Those are things we calculated, by the way. Like SMS, we have calculated. Here is your SMS. Let's take a look. It is 1.69 and 0.536. And there we go, 1.69 and SM1, 0.536, almost. You can see the fundamental period here, 6.613. And if you go to my location, it's, it's almost 0.613. But where is the difference? Let's see. Uh, 0 0.0446 and 0 0.9, right? So what is he doing here? Uh, 0 0.0466 and 0 0.9. So what gives? It might be a numerical error. I don't know. And uh, let's see. Base shear. Okay, this is K. The K is the exponent you're using for the vertical distribution, which is this one. Um, 1.043, which he calls 1.056. Very close to each other. CS is 0.194 used for the base shear. In my case, it is 0 0.203. Okay, very close. He calculates the base shear as being 1345, which I get as 1406. And he even does, wow, he, well, that's amazing. He even does the vertical distribution for you. That's pretty cool. And uh, let's see how he does that. Let's take a look. Um, so 83 and I got 88. 182174. It's very close. So I think this is a very mind opening, interesting calculation sheet to look at. And once again, I want to remind you you get this by going to analysis, uh, calculation note, and full note. So yeah, I think, I hope that with this video, I have dispelled every mystery about the ASCE 7 equivalent lateral force uh, procedure. And in this series, we have explained the theory behind it. We have applied it manually on an example and we have applied it in robot and you can see that the values are close to each other. So yeah, I hope that I deserve a like and share and subscribe from you with this video. And with that being said, I want to give a base shear sized shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video, then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on. Especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.